everybody. Hello, hockey fans. We're here for a new episode of Five for Talking. Uh, this week, we're just going to go over some NHL stuff quickly. Uh, we're going to focus mostly on some Leafs issues, news, yada, yada. Um, but we're going to start this one off on a sad note. Uh, we lost a legend recently in Mike Bossy. Islanders legend, NHL legend, in my opinion, the greatest goal scorer of all time. Um, I'm sure he's in the argument for greatest goal scorer of our, all time, no matter who you are. Um, we just want to send our thoughts out to his family and, you know, the Islanders organization. Took the words out of my mouth, man. I can't really add to that. Um, sucks what he had to go through. Um, young dude. It's not like he was old. He was 65 years old. Uh, but, you know, Sending our condolences, I guess. Yep. Uh, you got some stats you want to go over for Mike Bossy there? I mean, you touched you touched on it. One of the greatest goal scorers of all time. Um, 752 career games, 573 goals. I mean, uh, that's, that's amazing for the amount of games that he played to have that many goals. Uh, 553 assists, 1,126 points. 380 plus minus. That's crazy. I didn't even know that actually. So I, I just saw that right now. I was like, God dang. But um, <clears throat> the only time in his career that he was a minus was uh, his last year. But um, four time cup winner. I, uh, I was going to get to his uh, no, accomplishments, go ahead. but uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine straight years, 50 goals and above. Um, the only time that he had uh, less than 50 goals was his last year in 86, 87, 38. I mean, by then, his back was completely messed up. And he still had scored to, 38 goals. Still scored 38 goals. Um, retired early, unfortunately. Uh, was a Conn Smythe uh, trophy winner in 81, 82. Uh, 78, 78, he was a Calder trophy winner. Lady Bing. Trophy winner for three years, uh, four-time Stanley Cup winner. I mean, yeah. he's one of the greats, man. He was one of the greats. I think he's still a record holder for consecutive 50-goal seasons. Um, I think you're right. I, I believe that is. Yeah. yeah I believe I that's, that somewhere. That's true. And uh, <clears throat> if you go by, like we talked about this the other day, if you go by net statistics and like um, – progressive statistics and just gathering information and, and moving it towards aging. And like, there's all these new fangled stats, but uh, they say he would at least have got 50 for three more seasons, at least. So we can argue. We Campos, won't. We, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that we will. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We can argue Campos said if those guys in the eighties had today's technology and science and medicine, he probably would have been able to prolong his career for another five. Oh six yeah, years. and not to mention he also started at 21 years old, where most NHL players now come in at 18. Wayne Gretzky yep. was like just turned 18. Yep. Um. So I mean, you 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 took away three seasons right at the beginning of his career. Not to mention how many at the end. He would have had the most goals of all time. I have no doubt about it. And I actually have a stat right here: the most goals per game. Yeah, ever in history, Mike Bossy, 7.762 goals per game, which is almost point, uh, point zero one zero higher than uh, Mario Lemieux. Yep. So that's quite a, an accomplishment. And, uh, you know, you just got to give it to him. He's the, the only other two players to get 500 goals uh, faster than Mike Bossy was Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux. <laughs> so... Uh, you're in good company there. Team Canada's golds. You know, the guy's a legend. Well, not golds, but, you know, world championships or, or whatever it was back then. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, it really is nothing else that we could say. Uh, um, he, he was one of the best. He was one of the best, man. Hey, yeah. Side note, uh, Austin Matthews and Alex Ovechkin, both in the top seven for goals per game average. Uh, moving on from that. Uh, Sad to see Mike Bossy go. One of my favorite players. I uh, would have loved to have seen him 
go in in a real game. But uh, we got highlights. So anyways, uh, moving on from that, uh, more accomplishments, I guess we'll just get into here. Uh, Marc-Andre Fleury uh, it became the first goalie ever to have 15 straight postseasons last year. And now he has 16. And that's pretty crazy. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure we can fact check this later, but I'm pretty sure he has the most consecutive playoff, um, Versus. most consecutive playoff postseasons like appearances of any athlete that's active right now in sports. Yeah, because you imagine if you're still in Chicago. <laughs> you know what? What are the odds of that though? Right? I mean, I guess he probably didn't think that, but I'm sure the hockey pundits of the world were knew that he was most likely going to end up going to a playoff team, right? Because there was a lot of speculation about Washington and Edmonton and yeah. Colorado even, and then Minnesota. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure he was going to a playoff team. Yeah, I think he had the control. Uh, I think he had a no-trade clause. And uh, I think Minnesota was an option to go to. So, yeah, I mean, good on him. I haven't really checked on to see. I mean, Minnesota is one of the top teams in the Western Conference, I think. Yeah, they are. So he's got a legitimate chance. Yeah, he does. They look really good, too. Uh, Kaprizov has been amazing on that team. Um, Amazing. Yeah, he he wanted the money. He said, I'll do it if you give me the money. And he got the money and he did it. So let's see how far they can push it. That that would be that would be fun. Um, I mean, good goalie. It's nice to see that this happened. Good for him. Uh, continuing on with record style stuff here. So currently, at the time of filming this video, uh, it's Tuesday night here, April nineteenth. The twenty twenty two, twenty twenty two, the year of our Lord. Um, oh, Alex Ovechkin has six games remaining. To get 50 goals, he needs two more goals. Should he do so, he will be the oldest player ever to score 50 goals. Uh, Crazy. Yeah. And I, okay, I've always had trouble pronouncing this guy's name, uh, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Johnny Busick, if that's how you say his name, uh, from the Boston Bruins. Everyone knows him. He's a legend. He was the oldest player of all time to score 50 goals, and he was 35 years old. Uh, 1970, 1971. And I found this out from checking official sites. So my original data was wrong. The next two people under him are Alex Ovechkin when he was 33 and Yarmir Yager when he was 33. Wow. So there's already a two year gap between those two and uh, Johnny. So now, you know, if Ovechkin gets it, he's 36 years old. That'll, that'll be pretty crazy. That'll be pretty cool. crazy, man. That, uh, it just, uh, it just puts him that much closer <laughs> to that uh, all-time record of yeah, um, I... most uh, career goals. So I uh, yeah yeah go ahead. No, it, it, I mean that that would uh, I mean um, I think he'll end up being at around seven hundred and seventy goals in his career. I would have to double check. I can look at it right now, by the way. But um, <clears throat> um. 778 goals. Wow. So I believe, he isn't he pretty th- close to passing somebody? No, no, he's, he's, uh, oh, is third. he second? He's third. He's behind Gordy Howe and Wayne Gretzky. Gordy Howe is like 802. 801, I think. You could be right. Um, so he's got a, he's got a ways to go to catch up. Yeah, he'll Gordie get Howe. there. Definitely won't do it this year, but, um, it's amazing. <clears throat> it is. It is. Um, so when he gets his 50th goal, he'll be at 780 pretty much. That's crazy. Uh, so, good, good yeah. for him. You know, I, it, well, I doubted him. I was the only one of the three of us that doubted him in the beginning when, when we first were talking about this. And it looks like putting getting 50 goals this season, because the way we planned it was he was supposed to get 40 and then 35 for the next three years after. But he already got yeah, 50. He, you had a valid valid uh, argument because of the fact that the two seasons prior to this one were shortened. It kind of messed him up a little bit because he wasn't able to have a full season to get to 50 or whatever the case may be. But 
I think the the the, the crazy thing is, is that UI and Bargo is, are astonished over the fact that he was able to get 50 goals this year, and and he's a year older. Than uh, those and there was there were certain shortened. points of this season where he looked absolutely <laughs> unstoppable, but his age did kick in once in a while where he went on some cold streaks. But when yeah. he, when he hit those hot streaks, you were like, wow, two goals this game, two goals, the next game, three goals, the next game, like what, what's going on. But yeah. uh yeah. Good kind game. of went unnoticed too. Like we, I think it was you, you brought it up like last week. So, Hey man, he's closing up on 50. Yeah. It was him and Matthews uh closing up on 60. Um Matthews already has the record. So that is what it is. So I, I don't really have anything NHL, uh, after this, uh, do you? Because uh, or else I'm just going to go right into Leafs. You think Vancouver makes it? The West is actually a real toss-up. Uh, so that I for completely forgot about that. I'm glad you brought that up. I did want to talk about that. So currently the East is set. No one else can make it in the East, even though the Islanders have been playing really good hockey. They can't make it. It's impossible. No, it's impossible. It's, it's mathematically impossible. The Western Conference has... Four available spots with mm-hmm. three teams that could still get in the playoffs that aren't in the playoffs. Okay. Is so, Vancouver in the Pacific? Yes. That's crazy. So, like, when you look at the wild card, you got Nashville and Dallas both at 91. But then you look at the third spot in the Pacific with LA, they got 90. One less point than the two wild card spots. So, Vancouver would have to catch up to the LA Kings. Um, they he, they got a shot. They oh got yeah, a shot. There's because only was, one clinch team in the Western Pacific. Yeah, because uh, when you look at it, Vancouver still has a game in hand, eh? Mm-hmm. And if they win their next game, they would be like two points back. Okay, uh, back to your question. No, I don't think they will make it. I think if anyone sneaks in, it's most likely going to be Vegas. Um, and if any team falls out, it's most likely going to be the Kings. Vegas has been struggling, eh? And, yes. And that's, I, I mean, they are missing a lot of key guys, but they've been struggling. They have had a constant run of injuries, and Jack Eichel has not done much to make up for that. Yeah. Um. So that is what that is. But, yeah, uh, the Western Conference <clears throat> is wide open, absolutely wide open. Um, Arizona shall, shall we, sneakily uh, fell sh- down. And uh, they don't, they're not trying to get that first pick. Uh, but yeah, you know, you know, I, I'm glad the Kraken didn't have that great of a season because it gives them a chance to pick somebody up. Well, they gave away some assets um, during um, the trade deadline. So, you know, I, I think they were uh, sellers. So I, I think they were looking to sort of, throw away this season so that they get that top draft pick for next season. So they're still in a rebuild, man. I, I didn't, I think we both expected them to not really do that much. This was a different draft in comparison to the Vegas draft. Um, so I, they got a ways to go. They yeah. got a ways to go. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, you know, uh, they're in good hands right now. And I, I like what they're doing kind of. So let's just see where that goes. Yep. Uh, okay. So we're going right into leaps here. We'll talk about tonight quickly. Uh, Nylander scored two goals originally, and one of them got taken away. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, like, I want to touch base on, so you mentioned Nylander, career high for him in goals. Um, there's a lot of firsts for this uh, Toronto Maple Leafs team. A lot of First, potential hitting, finally. So, career, um, most points in the season for them. Most wins in the season. Mm-hmm. Um, you got uh, Matthews, who set a new record for goals in the season. Uh, you got Matthews hitting the 100-point mark for the first time in his career. You have Marner, who's going to break his own record for most points or have a career high in points. He has a He's shot at 102. And He's got a shot I at believe that's the first time there's ever been two Leafs at one time with 100 points. Yeah. You got uh, Marner setting a career high for goals in the season for him, for himself. Nylander's doing the same. Bunting having a great season. All these guys, a lot of these guys are just having career highs. Um, It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, I don't want to say anything. I, I, if I start talking. Yeah, but I get where you're, I get where you're going yeah, with this. I don't want to jinx uh, it. But good, Nylander's averaging over a point a game right now with the two points he got tonight. 
Uh, Tavares <laughs> is still at a point per game average here. So good for them. So we'll, we'll we might as well talk about uh, my boy, Austin Matthew, while I'm here. What's his name? Austin Matthew. Okay. Um, actually, shout out to Phil Esposito from our conversation before. At 32 years old, he got 61 goals. Okay. Anyways, I don't know why I had that. That was just on my phone. Uh, okay. So Leafs points. Austin Matthews right now sits fourth all time uh, behind Doug Gilmore, Doug Gilmore, Daryl Sittler, and Doug Gilmore. Uh, he's probably not going to get to the third spot, but good for him. That's fourth. Uh, as far as goals go, we know he's the one of only six times a Leaf has got 50 goals and one of only th- four. He's the fourth player to do it now. Dave Andrushuk, Rick Vive, Gary Lehman. Uh, Rick Vive did it three times. Good for him. Uh, underrated Leaf on a really bad Leafs team. So Vive, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just wanted to get. I just wanted to get that out. I just there's nothing for me to add. You you, you said everything, man. You said everything. Um, it's a good team. This They're playing team. well. It's their best season of all time. Um, literally, yeah. in ter- points by players, goals by players. Uh, like Campbell looks good when he's good. Like I, I I know that's a weird thing to say, but when he's when he's on his game, he looks really good. Campos, I, I mean, I'm going to make the argument that I, I, met, I, I made before, not with you, but even when I comment on Campbell, um, any goalie has a chance of being really good if the team in front of him is doing the job that they're supposed to be doing. It's as simple as that. They brought in guys Labru- like Labushkin. They brought in guys like Giordano uh, that are able to get a little physical, to move guys out of the way, to clear lanes. Um, that gives any goalie a chance to, to make a, a stop. Um, you know, it's still a little bit messy, but not as bad as, as before. So, you know, um, I, think, I think any goalie uh, can do as good of a job if, if the team in front of, the, in front of him is, is doing what they're supposed to be doing. All right, well, let's take it easy with any goalie, but yes, I agree. If the team is helping. How about this? It gives them a better chance to make a save. If lanes are clear, if if the goalie could see the shot, um, you know, uh, to limit the amount of tips, um, to limit the amount of screens, goalies are going to have a better chance of making a save if they can actually see the puck coming at them. It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? Um, it, I've already said, I've, I'm going to say the same thing I said before. I don't really think it was Campbell. I don't really think, um, you know, it was Shogren, Mrazek maybe. But, um, you know, the fact of the matter is, uh, Campbell's the same goal as he was last year. And I still but think he was a great well. goalie last year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not taking away from Campbell at all. I think people just need, need to take a second here. What Caps is saying is not that Campbell is bad. It's that he's going to have a better chance to do what he can do when he has a better team in front of him. Because for a bit, it sounded like you were saying that he's not very good and anyone could have done that. But that's not what you meant. I know that. No. What I'm trying to say is is um, any goalie will, will have a chance to play better. or With, with the team that plays like that. Yeah, when the team in front of them is, is doing what yeah, they're supposed 100%. to do. Yeah, hundred percent. Frederick That's Anderson it. on the on this Leafs team would have been lights out right now. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, so I mean, Giordano looks really good. Uh, Lilgren looks fantastic. Um, compared to the Lilgren we've seen, let, let me rephrase that. He's but, uh, really coming to his own. I think yeah. uh, the fact that uh, you know the you know them bringing in Giordano has really rubbed off on Lilgren. The experience has really um, rubbed off on him. Uh, he's confident. Um, sometimes it's just as, you know, it's just as easy as finding a good partner to, to play with that will just make you that much better. Um, you know, I mean, you made the point of Riley looks, would look so much better if he played with a guy who is labeled a stay-at-home defenseman. And Labushkin is that guy for Riley. Yeah. 
and you know, that's, for, a couple of, for a couple of games, there were a couple of hiccups with Labushkin, but ultimately, overall, he's playing amazing. And I'm willing to. Anybody thinks I still want to see the Brody Giordano situation, but I'm going to tell you something. I like the way that two two way defensemen play together with Brody and Muzzin. I kind of yeah. like it. I, I'm I'm cool with your 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 take on that. However. Um, because Lilligren is so playing so well with Giordano, I see no point in, in splitting. Yeah, that's it what up. I'm saying. I don't. And now I don't, you have no. Brody who can, you know, um, bring someone else up to their level, aka Muzzin, uh, who has struggled this year. And the times that he was playing with Brody, he was, he was okay. He was actually playing well. Um, I don't think he's 100 percent yet, though. But uh, you know, it's it's uh, he still has time to rest up. I think we're like what two weeks away from playoffs, so it's there's uh for the Leafs four games left, I believe. Uh no, they only played. Uh, it's four or five. Five. Five games left. You're right. Yeah. Um. So it's still about what maybe two weeks. Next Friday is the last game. Yeah, okay. For the league. I mean, it's going to take a, maybe a couple of days to plan out playoffs and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, which on that Tuesday following that ending of the season, we will do our uh, new tier list ranking the, the 18 teams that made – 16 teams, sorry, that made the playoffs. And uh, that'll be fun. But, okay, I want to realistic, ask you a realistic question here. Without who, who, who would you prefer they play? Um, that was going to be my second question, but you might as well go with that. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I kind of thought you were going to ask this question. So, um, here's my honest answer. This team should not give a damn who they play because their biggest challenge is not Florida. It's not Tampa. It's not Boston. It's themselves. Okay. They are the ones that are holding themselves back because they right now probably in their minds believe that they can't get past the first round. Okay. They need to get over that hump. They need to go into this playoffs with full of confidence and they need to get the job done. Um, do I believe that they are a legitimate contender? I think any team has a chance of winning that Stanley cup. I'll just put it that way. I mean, before Tampa won it, they were not labeled a contender. They were labeled an amazing team, but ultimately it was them. They were the ones that needed to get over that hump and take it to the next step, all right? And the same thing goes for this team. It's up to them. It it's really is up to them. So if you're going to ask me who would I prefer uh, they play, um, to solidify a win right now, Tampa is kind of struggling in comparison to the other two. All right. Um, I think their best ch chance right now, right now is with Tampa, unless they catch a hot streak selfishly Boston, because I want them to kick the shit out of them. And that's my take, but ultimately their biggest challenge is themselves and they need to get it going to the same with a lot of confidence, um, it's really up to them. This is the deepest they've ever been, eh? This is the deepest roster they have in terms of defense and the forwards. That's my take. What do you think? Well, that was Believe in Yourself with Dr. Phil. Um, but no, thank you for asking for my take. Um, You're welcome. So I'm going to be as absolutely realistic as possible. Um, I would want to face Boston or Washington, and I'll tell you why. Tampa Bay seems like the logical pick here because they're doing really bad. They haven't played really well. Like, I gave you all those advanced stats since the very beginning of March. They have not played well. They have three games that you would consider dominating wins since March. Um, but you don't want to face a team with this much playoff experience uh, the kind of talent they have, 
they've they're back to back champions, and the same issue that we had last year in the playoffs a red hot number one goalie that's not just a number one goalie, uh, the number one goalie arguably in the NHL. And he can turn it on at any moment. And the last thing you want to do is dominate Tampa Bay for the whole game, but lose one nothing. Do you know what I mean? Um, and as bad as they look right now, I'm always worried about that Vasilevsky is just going to turn it on and the Leafs can't score. Uh, Boston doesn't have that problem because Boston's goalie situation is wishy-washy. And I think no matter how good the offense plays, the Leafs can outscore them. And I feel the same way about Washington. But... Washington still has Ovechkin and you always have to be worried about Ovechkin and like his just will to win and the way he is with those guys in the locker room. We've seen him do that, but their goalie situation is a little bit better than Boston's. In my opinion, I'd rather get Boston, but the way it looks, we're getting Tampa Bay. Yeah. The way it looks, we are getting Tampa Bay. Boston is missing Pasternak right now. Uh, and, and you could clearly see the difference from when he is. Oh, he's the, the best lineup, player on the team. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Bergeron and Marchand are... are They're great. Older. They're still great. They're still They're great. older. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I think the more we... Uh, closer we get to the playoffs, um, I'm finding that, like, Florida is, like, probably uh, the clear cut that might come out of this thing. But I'm going to say this right now. Um, and Carolina is missing Anderson. I don't know how long he's gone for, but uh, the New York Rangers are becoming the most unpredictable. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't know. <laughs> like, I just don't know what they can do. Honestly, and, I and it's think crazy. if Carolina <laughs> stays uh, without Anderson for a bit, I mean, Ranta's not that bad of a goalie. He, he's pretty, he's one of the better backups in the NHL, but um if they get Anderson back and they're healthy, let's just say, I think the left side of the board, the, the winner, the better team. So Florida, Toronto, Carolina, New York are most likely the advanced teams here are teams that will advance because I can't see as much as I would love to say Pittsburgh's going to go the way they've looked lately. You could see the humanness of them. And when Crosby and Malkin are not playing at 200%, that team cannot carry its own weight. Uh, Boston, Without Pasternak, it's like basically not having Austin Matthews. He's equally as good as the best players in the NHL. Tampa Bay's wishy-washy at the moment, the like we said. The, but the difference is that Boston, when Pasternak's not there, Boston, they don't play well. But no, the, I with agree. the Leafs, like with Austin Yeah, Matthews but the Leafs stuff, have more than play that. well. Yeah, this, that's, but, that, that just goes to show their depth. And this, their, is, this is where we, we can agree on this. The Leafs yeah. have John Tavares, uh, understandable. He's the Bergeron slash Marchand of this team that that does what he's supposed to do. He's still a good player, but he's aging. But they also have Nylander, Marner, and Matthews, where Boston only has basically Pasternak. So uh, without him, there's a difference. And like we said, Washington is up in the air. What's going to happen with Washington? Um, but I think the left side of the, the the bracket is much stronger with the, the high-ranked teams. And I, I personally, I would love to see... Florida, okay, obviously I want the Leafs. If I want to see the Leafs first Minnesota because those are my two favorite teams of all time. Before I was a Leafs fan, I was always a Minnesota fan. And I would love to see Florida versus Colorado. Everyone has their faults. Hey, <laughs> Minnesota North Stars were great when I was a kid. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, man. they I'm were kidding. great. They I made it to the finals. You're, you're getting upset. Brian I'm, Bellows. I'm kidding, I'm kidding um, man. Mike Padano. Yeah, um, exactly. But when we're looking at the Western Conference, what do you think? I think it's um, clear cut. Like Colorado is just amazing. I think it's a little bit opposite here between like the favorite team and the uh, and the the opposite. So Colorado, I like I like Minnesota in the, in that matchup. I like Calgary, and I think LA. Whoever I, I I see Edmonton getting upset again, and and going home looking like losers. Um, and I don't mean that like, but I just see it happening. I really do. I feel like they're going to come up on a team that really wants it, and they're going to lose. And their goaltending situation playoffs. is not ideal. Of all the teams in the playoffs right now, Edmonton has the least ideal goalie situation. Yeah, but they've been playing well. I give them that much, but it, it's all up in the air, man. This is going to be a fun playoffs. And, you know, regardless of what happens, I'm still going to rock the same hat that you're rocking right now, and I don't care. Uh, I'm, I'm going to always be a fan. So... 
Let's. This is gonna be a fun playoffs, man. Yeah, this is gonna I be a think fun so playoffs. too. Uh, that's all I have. You have anything else? No. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, let us know who you think is gonna win the cup in the comments, and peace out.